created a very a kind of small scale noir film, and I shaped it for Paul's sensibility. I mean, it was about characters that I'm uh, I'm known for, but I also wanted to write it for Paul Schrader to direct, and that is really how it, it came about. Here's Paul. Uh, um, um, in the Hollywood movie that I had done, Singular, uh, uh, I, I got the opportunity to really kind of learn a character, you know, dive into him, become him, you know, analyze him, think about how he react to things, opposed to um, in my adult work where I primarily uh, it's more about you know getting it as much across in the shortest amount of time possible because if you you know pay attention to an adult movie you know the, the movie itself can only be so long and they can only put so much character development into into that time uh, so the opportunity to really develop a character and fully kind of get to know him was really thrilling and exciting uh, regarding the American Gigolo uh, swagger. I'm gonna give credit to the director on that one because uh, he, he, he's the link between the two. And uh, I would say any, any uh, similarities I had to Richard Gere were uh, all because of Walsh. Well, I'm gonna send a little bit of cinematographer on the second day. He said, I'm shooting sure Jiggle over here because the house kept driving me into those kind of angles. And, and, and then the, the secret of the, the Richard Gere swagger, uh, it's really a ring the low. It's really walking on the balls of your feet. I just naturally do that. <laughs> Paul, um, you mentioned Jiggle. Uh, the challenge of flying uh, was not only to make this film with bread, but to, to discover whether such a thing was even possible, particularly possible by me. You know, can you make, I make a film under the new law, whereby it is financed, it is cast, it is uh, crewed, it is promoted, and it is distributed through social media. And, uh, and uh, we were able to do that. Um, and so that was part of the, the buzz of actually doing it. I, I don't think that buzz would be there the second time around. <laughs> I would feel, I would feel the, the weight of, a, of the lack of money, of money more than I did on this first trip because that, part of the fun was, you know, we don't have any money, we don't pay for things, we don't pay for permits, we don't pay for hair, makeup, uh, you know, you do your own wardrobe, you do your own transportation. What about you, Brett? You're part of that social media. Things that I've ever had in terms of working on a film. Uh, many films we work on uh, as a writer and they never get made. They are uh, stuck in a kind of development process at the studios, which now really kind of no longer exists, that kind of studio development process that a writer can find himself stuck in for many, many years on a project. Those days are over because the studios are now making a particular kind of movie and there's really just a, a, a very small group of writers that they hire to make those kind of films. So when I started writing the script in January 2012, um, I wrote the script I wanted to write. Uh, Paul approved the script. Uh, it was uh, a vision of the world that we both shared. Uh, there were not going to be any notes from any outside people. We were going to make take this material and make a movie for no money from it. Um, and so we started shooting the movie, I believe, in July of that year. So it was basically from the time I started writing the script to the time he was, he was done shooting, it been about seven months. And then by the time we were finished with post-production, it had been about, I don't know, a little bit over a year. And it was a, uh, it, and the movie turned out much, much better than I even imagined. It, it, Paul, I think we needed a veteran uh, director like Paul to, you know, tackle this movie because it was very, it was very tricky to make. We didn't have a lot of time. We had no money, and I was amazed at how elegant the film ended up looking for a movie that literally had a budget of about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The ninety-second answer that is in the finished reloading section. Um, I, I think that's just too big of a question uh, uh, to get into, it would become a panel about something else. I mean, it, the film is, is undergoing a systematic change. 
not just about systemic change. Everything we know in the, from the past doesn't apply. I've had it for a very long time. Um, I, uh, I, I got into the old film industry and everyone told me I needed a stage name. I said why, because my theory was if anybody knew what my real name was, a fake name wouldn't confuse them. They would still be able to look at the screen and be like, oh look, it's, it's Brian. They would be confused by James. Um, but everyone said I needed a stage name, so I adapted the nickname and, and uh, yeah, the end. Um, as far as narratives in adult films, there there are still to this day plenty of movies that are you know still doing the the, the feature style you know plot driven you know story. Um, but uh, it, what I was referring to was the character development, the the amount of time that you get even in these older '70s '80s movies that you're talking about. Um, they, there's just not enough time to really develop a full character, and you know all the you know minute little details of like somebody's you know personality in, in an adult film, which uh, you know on one hand makes it very easy, and on the other hand uh, you know it uh, it kind of I feel like you know it, 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 it takes away from the story, which is why I believe a lot of people think adult films are just kind of like the, the plot ones are, are kind of the joke because they uh, they don't. You have the opportunity to really do everything.